we have found how to calculate the confidence interval for the mean of a distribution using the normal distribution. This works just fine if we know the population, standard deviation, but that will never happen. The normal distribution can also work if we have a large sample size, say greater than 30. In that case, we can substitute the point estimate for the standard deviation from the sample, S, and do our calculations. But what if we have a small sample size and we do not know the population standard deviation? The answer is the student's T distribution, invented for just this case. The student's T distribution has one of the most desirable properties of the normal distribution. It is symmetrical. What the student's T distribution does is spread out the horizontal axis so it takes a larger number of standard deviations to capture the same amount of probability. In reality, there are an infinite number of students' T distributions, one for each adjustment to the sample size. As the sample size increases, the student's T distribution becomes more and more like the normal distribution. When the sample size reaches 30, the normal distribution is usually substituted for the student's T because they are so much alike. This graph shows as the sample size moves from 10 to 20, the student's T distribution gets closer to the normal distribution, which is marked in a red color. This is another example of one distribution limiting another one. In this case, the normal distribution is the limiting distribution of the student's T when the degrees of freedom in the student's T reaches 30. We can confirm this limiting feature of the normal by comparing the value found in the student's t table at infinite degrees of freedom with those values found in the normal table for the same level of probability. Restating the formula for a confidence interval for the mean for cases when the sample size is smaller than 30 and we do not know the population standard deviation sigma, we get mu equals x bar plus or minus t sub alpha over 2 nu times s over the square root of n. Here the point estimate of the population standard deviation s has been substituted for the population standard deviation sigma and t sub nu alpha has been substituted for z alpha. The Greek letter nu that looks something like a v is placed in the general formula in recognition that there are many t distributions, one for each sample size. Nu is called the degrees of freedom of the distribution and depends on the sample size. For this type of problem, the degrees of freedom is nu equals n minus 1, where n is the sample size. To look up a probability in the student's t table, we have to know the degrees of freedom in the problem and the level of confidence we desire. We will develop the details of how to read the t-table in an example in our next video.